These are all the measurements that you kind of need to take into account. Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I would talk about some of the things you need to think about if you're thinking of installing a lift inside your garage. This is like one of these I really wish I'd paid a little bit more attention to. So let's get into it. All right, so one of the first things is aesthetics, right? Like how's it gonna look in your garage? You're gonna be okay with that. I'm not like super, super keen on aesthetics. I'm more function over form. But for aesthetics, you can see in this case, this lift has black finish, pretty neutral, no big deal. There's some other lifts out there that I think have better paint finish than this one. So if that's something that's important to you, keep that in mind. Second thing that's really, really important is you wanna make sure that your garage floor is like pretty level. So the lifts somewhat level themselves, but if you have like a really crooked garage floor, then you may wanna rethink the whole process of getting a lift. It's probably just not gonna level out, be a really unsafe situation. So think about that. Now, of course, the, ne the next thing real easy is weight limits. Every lift will come with its spec on how much weight it can actually take. So yeah, the Challenge is a pretty heavy car, over 4,000 pounds. This one I think was rated for, if I'm not mistaken, like seven or 8,000 pounds. I remember I got this like a couple years ago, but I've had no issues with this on the lift, no issues with my wife's cars on the lift. So check the weights and you wanna have more weight limit than less weight limit just to give yourself a little bit of breathing room there, right? All right, so next thing you wanna keep in mind is that these aren't like something that you order on Amazon, right? The Amazon Prime guy comes and delivers it at your doorstep. A lift like this is going to come via freight service. So that what that means is that if you get it delivered to your house, a truck is gonna to come to your driveway or whatever, and then you're gonna to need to figure out how to get it off the truck and into your garage. And this is assuming that you wanna put it together yourself, which you can with a friend, but I don't know that most people have like a forklift to get it off a truck, right? The other thing you can do is you can have it shipped to a freight center. Let's say there's a freight yard that's close to your house, somewhere in the same region, and you can take a pickup truck there to load into the pickup truck and you can take it home from that. That's an option. What I opted for was just professional delivery and installation, which means I got a guy that he picked it up from the freight yard, put it in his truck, brought it here, took it out, installed it, made sure everything was good, leveled it. So I could basically just have peace of mind that this thing's gonna fall on me while I'm under the car. So those are your options. All right, next thing you wanna keep in mind is that these four post lifts, at least all the models I've seen or brands I've seen, have an option for bridge jack. So this is what a bridge jack looks like. Here, I'll take you above, you'll see those, those things that I have. I have two of them here. So basically what those do is they sit in the middle of the platforms, right? Like where you're driving the car on and you can slide them back and forth and you can use those to actually raise the car while it's on the lift, which would be super helpful to do any type of tire service, anything you need to get the wheels off of, right? Well, the car's up. Now, the only thing is I've never used them because I've never had to do anything like that. And I just feel like it's easier when I had to change the wheel speed sensors, for example, on this, I just jacked it up while it was on the floor, which is way easier than putting it on a lift and taking it up there and using a bridge jack. So if I had to do it all over again, I'd either opt not for any bridge jacks or potentially just one, one bridge jack that I could have just used back and forth instead of the two sets that I got and saved a little bit of money there. Plus it would have opened up the lift a little bit, like in the middle, I wouldn't have had those in the way. All right, so the final, and this is the most important part about getting a lift is make sure you have the space for it. So when I mean space, you wanna make sure you have the width, first of all, so this is a two car garage. My wife parks her car in this garage as well. So I need to make sure that this width, like where the lift would be, and this includes the motor, right? This is kind of a pain actually here. I wish I had mounted on the other side, is enough for her to be able to pull in and pull out without a problem. The other thing you wanna make sure is that you obviously have enough height clearance, right? So this garage is pretty tall, but it's not super tall, but I had enough clearance. You can see that the garage door can come up here and it's not banging into anything on the lift. Now you also, this is like super key is keep in mind the width, right? So the Challenger is a pretty wide car and with the lift up like this, you can't really see it, but it, it's fine, right? I mean, I can get the car pretty comfortably in and out. However, when the lift is down and I'm driving the car up, one thing that you'll see here is you will see these cables, right? Stick out a little bit, like probably, I don't know, what is that? Maybe like a couple inches. 
that decreases the room. So when you're driving the car on, it's very, very tight clearance. From mirror to mirror, if I don't have the mirrors up and they're fully extended, it's super, super tight to get the car in without scraping on the mirrors. And if you put the mirrors up, then the problem is you can't see while you're backing up, which is super important. Make sure the car's on the, on, on the, on the ramps, right? So one thing I'll say is if I was doing this again, I may opt for the bend pack instead of this as an auto park lift because the bend pack, the cables are actually hidden inside the frame. You don't see them on, you don't see them exposed like you do here. And that makes it easier. However, the bend pack's wider. So then you got to take into account, all right, well, it's going to take up more space in the garage. I probably could have pushed the lift a little bit further towards the wall, but I wanted to keep some clearance on that side in case I need to fill the tires or something in the cars here. So it's kind of why I left it like that. The other thing is you want to keep into mind, keep in mind your garage door. Now there's some options you have for that. So this is probably number one. The biggest issue you're going to have with a lift is what you're going to do with this. When we moved into this house, we had to get the garage door redone anyways, it was like basically falling apart. And so I asked the garage door guy, hey, make it as high as possible. And he lifted the tracks up so the garage door can be as high as it possibly can be. However, you still got an opener, right? So you got an opener with the track, something you got to think about. Another option you have is they do have side lift garage door openers. So I saw this on someone's house. Basically what you can do is you can have the garage door opener like up here on the side of the garage door and then it lifts it that way and that keep, kind of keeps it up out of the way which means that you can lift the garage door as high as you possibly can in your garage so if you have really tight clearance that's something you might want to look into and then another nice thing i mean i wish i could have done it with this lift is you can stack cars right so there's a guy down the street that has an nsx on the top he has his viper on the bottom you can do that the only thing i keep in mind there is the height of those cars and you got to keep in mind this thickness and so you got to stack them add the thickness add both of these to see if it'll fit now the tricky part there is you can see here you can see over there you see those like little like rectangle type of looking things right those are your locking system for your lift so what happens with a lift is how it works right is you have these cables this hydraulic oil and so when you put the motor on, it lifts it up and basically just pushing a hydraulic oil out there to lift the, the platform, right? But uh, anyone that you've even used like a jack, you know, you don't want to leave that just resting on the hydraulics just in case there's like a leak of the fluids or something that everything's going to come crashing down. You, know, you have a lot of damage, probably injury, death if you're under the lift. So... What happens is that these lifts have, they call it this ladder locking system, right? So those rectangles that are in there are basically locks. So as the lift goes up, it locks, locks, locks. So because of that, you're going to want to make sure that you have the lift at a point where it's locked in and then you can stack another car on top of it. And now to make it worse is you have to lift it a little bit in order to release the lock so you can lower it. So measuring clearance with two cars and stacking them is not super simple because of that you can't just add up the height of both cars and add this portion you need to give it some room so i would say like just to be conservative what you want to do is take each car add this portion and then probably add another foot maybe two feet to give you the real good idea of whether it's going to be possible to keep both cars up and down and on top of that, you're going to have your garage door, right? So that needs to have clearance. Now, if you back the car in, it's possible that the garage door is before the windshield. So you'd have some clearance there. But these are all the measurements that you kind of need to take into account. I'll put a link to where I got this lift from. The sales rep I work with was super helpful, actually, in helping me figure out these calculations. And he told me I'm not going to be able to stack this car and the Subaru on top of each other when I had the STI. But I figured that's fine. I'm going to get it anyways because I want to use it for servicing. And if I can stack them, great. If I can't, no, no big deal. It turned out I couldn't stack them. My roof here, this is in Florida. We have like a lot of trusses here for hurricane protection. So there's really nothing I could do to like vault the ceilings and make some room there without compromising the structural integrity of the house. So I pretty much just left it as is. And ah, whatever, I don't have the Subaru anymore. I have the shirt though, so... Yeah, so that's really it. I mean, living with the lift day to day, not a big deal. You can see I got the ramps down there. I use them as stops because 
whatever the county requires you have these bollards i got this tesla power walls installed and they don't want you like ramming into the batteries and exploding everything so they make you put these like safety bollards here so this helps you know prevent from hitting those yeah i mean it's not too bad honestly the reason why i have the lift up like this right now is it's just easier to drive in and park under this and not have to worry about the cables and worry about getting on the ramp to get on the lift so i always keep it up here and then when i need to use it i bring it back down yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. And if there's anything you want to know more about this lift or any other things you'd like me to cover in a future video, let me know. Otherwise, check out these next videos and I'll see you there. Thanks. Bye.